How's it going, everybody? This is Visa Bush. This is the Seacon 12.8 volt, 100 amp lithium iron phosphate battery. When you're building a battery bank, you want low price, but high quality. You're gonna be able to find this for around 17 cents per watt hour. Today, I'm gonna take this apart Take a look at the capacity, evaluate it, take a look at the internal components. Most of them I've seen has two little plastic things to cover the terminals. Most of them comes with two pairs of screws and most of them would have little caps for you to put on top to protect the screw terminals. This handle for this size battery is a new one. It is removable, so you don't actually have to have this around if you don't like it. Each one of these weighs about 23 pounds and they tend to be a little bit easier to handle than the 200 amp hour ones, which is roughly twice the weight. It says here you can put four of them in parallel and four of them in series. When you put them in parallel they all need to be the same voltage. Connect them one at a time in parallel. Let the voltage equalize and then you put on another one and another one until you have four of them in parallel. When you put them in series, first one would go negative positive. Second one in series would go from positive to negative and so on and so forth until you have four of them. You might be tempted to buy four of these and make a 48 volt battery. But in my experience, I had the bigger 200 amp hour 12 volt batteries and I put two of them in series and I made a 24 volt system. I started with both batteries at equal voltage, but after a couple of months, they differ by about 0.3 volts. This is pretty significant. If one cell is lower in voltage than another and you treat the entire pack as equalized, you could potentially overcharge one cell or over discharge another. So it's very important to keep them balanced and they do sell battery balancers that you can attach to the battery at all times. I already did a charge and discharge test on this. Typically they recommend these to be charged at 20 amps and discharge at 20 amps, but at maximum you can charge them at 100 amps or discharge it at 100 amps. In my test of charging at 20 amps, it took five hours and 15 minutes and I was able to push in 103 amp hours. So capacity is definitely verified. It's nice that it's a little bit higher, but as you use it over the first year, it's probably gonna degrade a couple of percent anyway. This charging it at 100 amps, which is the maximum that this thing can go, you expect it to get a little bit warm. I got a capacity of 104 amp hour. So capacity re-verified with the high discharge rate. You expect these things to get a little bit warm. So I took some thermal imaging of this thing right after I discharged it at 100 amps for an entire hour. The negative cable has gone up to 150 degrees, but it can withstand 220, so we should be okay. I noticed the battery is a little bit warm right here. It shows 113. When you go and measure it, it can vary between 10 volts at its lowest ever that you should ever see it. If it goes any lower, you're gonna damage the internal cells. And 14.6 volts is the highest it should ever go. Internally with lithium iron phosphates, you know, I already know there's gonna be four cells in this thing, and there's also gonna be an internal battery balancer. Each of them has a battery balancer. Why do you need one to balance all of them? That's because it's not being balanced across the entire pack. The battery balancer in this thing, it's only balancing the four cells in here. With that said, let me just pry open this cap and let's see what's inside. It's actually really good. They didn't glue this into the case, so it makes it easier for me to remove it. The bottom of the case has a little bit of foam. Four of them in series, they're spot welded. It's taped together on the top and bottom. And we see the battery balancing cables here, positive terminal, negative terminal, and in between, one, two, three. The balancing cables goes from this into the circuit board here. And there's also one temperature sensor that goes all the way on the terminal of the third cell. It's glued right in there. Here we have grade A EVE cells, one of the best in the industry. They put really good cells in, really good BMS. They pad it all around to prevent any kind of shock. This is an ABS plastic housing, which is flame retardant. The top is completely sealed all the way around. So it's IP65 rated. Although I wouldn't try to submerge this in water or anything. You do have live contacts here and here. It's more like if you happen to get any water splashed on it, it's not gonna leak inside. This is a very nice BMS, the JBD brand, capable of supporting four cells, 100 amps. You have a four gauge wire coming in to the battery, coming out of the battery and into the BMS is two seven gauge wire. And going from the BMS to the negative terminal, 
is also two seven gauge wires. If you look at this temperature connector, it says NTC 10K and another says NTC 100K. These are just different kinds of temperature sensors that they can use. NTC stands for negative temperature coefficient. So the hotter it gets, the lower resistance they will be. We can measure the temperature probe here. It says 10.45. I'm gonna blow my breath on the temperature sensor. And you see it kind of gradually reduced to 10K ohm. Pry out this temperature probe here. Let me connect this back up so we can draw some power from this. My 12 volt inverter is a little bit overpowered for this battery. It can do 3000 watts, but the battery can only do 1280 watts. Right now it's pulling 100 amps out of this battery. After testing these batteries for a while, I just don't like wasting it, especially in the summer. I don't wanna use a heater and just burn it all off. So what I'm doing over here is I'm charging another battery bank. Right now is at 1,100 watts. I can bump it all the way up to 140 amps. I removed the temperature probe. I put it back right here, but that's not gonna be the thing that turns it off because right where the temperature probe is, is actually really cool. 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The things that's getting warm is the control board, 122 right there. And there's a 136 at that terminal. These cables are rated all the way up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. So those things are certainly not gonna melt. It's not sensing the current in order to cut it off. It's waiting for something to get too hot before it cuts it off. Having drained 25 amp hours or a quarter of the capacity, it's supposed to cut off around 65 C and that's around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The board right now is 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So rather than running it all the way to that temperature, I'm just gonna cut it short for now. We can test out the cutoff by heating the temperature probe itself. I've set this up to charge at 20 amps. The voltage of the battery is 13.4 and I'm gonna take the temperature probe over here and cool it see if it stops the charging this is just the air duster and i'm gonna spray some cold it just stopped so that means this temperature probe is working warm it back up with my finger here and it starts charging again. Similarly, we can heat it up to 55 degrees C, which is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. To do that, we can use a heat gun. Right there, it turned to zero. We cool it down with my finger again. It should start up again. So temperature probe, at least this one is working. There's always another one within the circuit board itself to measure the temperature of the circuit board. So if I ran it really hard, discharged at, I don't know, 150 amp, 200 amps or so, we might be able to get the temperature of this thing high enough in order to make it cut off. Usually batteries of this size does not support trolling motors or large inductive loads. Officially it has a 100 amp BMS, but it doesn't really cut off based on current. It cuts off based on temperature of the internal BMS. And based on my previous tests, I ran it 30% over capacity, which is 130 amps or so. It ran for minutes. So now let's make some milk tea i have a pot of water i want to boil let me turn this on it's doing 100 amps already and then i can turn on this hair dryer really great if you jumped in the ocean and need to dry your hair from your trunk while that's running i need a teaspoon of sugar on the milk about one teaspoon of tea i brew my tea in this bigger cup three minutes at 230 amps it's still heating my water up. It's still pulling 230 amps. Once it reaches 212 degrees, the water pot is throttling this. It's not the battery that's throttling it. So it's able to heat my tea just fine. I need about six ounces of water for five, six. Many of these batteries won't allow that much current to be pushed through. Of course, in order to do something like this, you need a really big inverter. Technically, this battery can support up to 300 amps, which means you need an inverter that can do 3,600 watts. Mine is just slightly shy of that at 3,000 amps. But even if you have such a powerful inverter, it can only run it for a few minutes. Many times when you have such high power requirements, is not for a very long time. You just want to boil water, it takes a few minutes. If you want to use a hairdryer, a few minutes. If you have a stove, you want to make eggs, a few minutes as well. Continuously 
1280 watts and between 100 and 300 amps you can run it until the internal bms is up to 150 degrees fahrenheit i have a multimeter here that's accurate to within one ten thousandth of a volt i'm going to measure each cell to see how close in voltage they are to each other 3339 3338 0.3337 very very close 0.33 Eight. So the internal BMS has equalized all of this to within 0.0001 volt. The internal EVE cells are rated at 5,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. Depth of discharge means how often you go from 100% all the way to zero. This is driving it very, very hard. And if you consistently do this 5,000 times, this battery will then have a capacity of 80%. It doesn't mean it's going to completely go to zero and be completely unusable or anything. If you baby it and it only do 60% depth of discharge, after you do 18,000 cycles, you're still going to have 80% capacity. The color scheme is pretty interesting. I like the little handle. Overall, it passed all my tests. I would definitely use something like this. I do recommend that if you string a couple of them together to use a battery balancer so you don't have to take it all apart and recharge all the batteries every couple months or so. If you guys are interested in getting these batteries, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.